Hello everybody and welcome back to the poor man's chemist. In this video I am going to be making my final attempt with trying to make samarium diiodide or if it all goes tits up we should end up with samarium triiodide that is essentially anhydrous. which would be our consolation prize. At this point, I will absolutely take either one because I'm really tired of fucking with this experiment. <laughs> I have put so much work into this, it is ridiculous. Um, samarium diiodide is a tricky compound to make. It is very sensitive to the influence of air, water, evil spirits. Um, I have only been able to produce this compound transiently by thermal decomposition and it almost instantly broke down. We are going to try to make it um, from dendritic samarium in THF. That is what we have going on down here. So the THF has been dried over molecular sieves. It's been refluxed to degas it. I have done everything I can. I, this entire apparatus has been flushing with argon for, oh, I don't know, over half an hour now. And not counting the time I already flushed it before and then had to put everything on hold because um, the gas line broke. You can see I've got my redneck powers in maximum here for this thing because the first time I tried this, the gas line ended up breaking. So we got the argon cylinder there that thickson of tube there, that's packed with calcium chloride pellets that have been dried in the oven for hours. And then that comes down through a little hypodermic needle there that is epoxied onto the end of the hose and coming into the apparatus. I have flushed out both those little necks and I am really, really hoping that I've managed to at least get all the fucking air out of this thing. Um, like I said, this is either going to work or it won't, man. This is my last attempt with this. I've been after this fucker for years. If doing everything that I've done isn't enough, then it's just not practical to try to make this stuff in my backyard lab. This is a compound that's known for being tricky when you're making it in a regular old chemistry lab. So, you know, if we are not successful, it's okay. Now, I mean, there are a number of ways you can go about making this stuff. Um, really, a better way would be to use 1,2-diiodoethane or diiodomethane, but making that would have taken even more work and even more time. And since I have to move here in about four months, I really need to start getting all of my recycling processed and start figuring out what chems I'm going to keep and which ones I'm going to try to sell. Yeah, if you're looking for chems, um, shoot me an email. Um, address is in the description and let me know. I'm going to be putting together a list of everything um, that I am not going to be holding on to. Some things I really can't ship, like solvents. I mean, unless you really want them. Kind of expensive. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I got that coming up. There won't be too many more prep videos coming, guys. Um... I'll probably still try to go ahead and do potassium hexacyanomanganate 3 just because that would be really nice and would kind of complete the set of um, transition metal cyanide complexes that are within my power to create. Um, so yeah, yeah. Oh, well, and probably because I won't be able to resist potassium octocyanotungstate. I do need to do that one as well. But really, man, I mean, there's just, I'm running out of time <laughs> um, and money. Uh, that's another thing. I know everybody else is feeling the crunch too, man. It sucks for everyone. But these days it's gotten so bad that doing this just isn't really feasible, at least not like I've done it in the past. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what's going to happen after I move, guys. A lot of things are up in the air right now. But anyway, uh, I'll keep posted. Anyway, 
enough of current events and bitching and moaning about this fucking thing. Let's go ahead and give this fucker a try. Oh. Yep, it's in there all right. Let's get that away from the vents are still looking good. Yes, yes, everything's looking good. We've still got flow. Yep, that's good. It's stirring, it's heating. Okay, man. Nothing. All right, I took this out of the dish so you guys could see it. Um, this is very odd to me. So, clearly the divalent iodide, samarium diiodide, we ain't getting that, right? However, all of the metal, from what I can tell, seems to have disappeared. I'm sure there's still pieces of it in there because there's still iodine in there. Um, we are losing THF out this thing. It's just flowing out with the argon, even though I've got ice water running through the condenser. Um, I'm still slowly losing it over time. It's so thick though, man, and you can see this orange crust we've got on the side here. I mean, I'm, I, I'm thinking that has to be samarium triad. I don't know what the hell it can be. Um, I've never seen the anhydrous stuff. It might be orange for all I know. Again, it's not iodine. So that's really the only option left. Why we ended up with the triiodide, not the divalent iodide? Well, something clearly fucking oxidized it. Um... Uh, I don't know what, traces of water, traces of air, the apparatus wasn't completely airtight, the influence of dark and evil spirits, God has cursed me, never shall ye make a divalent iodide, you little piece of shit, I don't know, um, but whatever, like I've said the whole time, even if we get an anhydrous trivalent iodide out of this, that's fine. That is our consolation prize. It kind of looks like that's what we're getting. So I'm going to put it back into the water bath and we're going to keep going and see what we get. Either way, this is becoming a video because I've used so much argon, man. I, I can't justify not using it. <laughs> this footage for something. Anyway, come back when there's something to report. God, this is so soul-crushing. Well, now, would you look at that shit? I mean, clearly, I don't think we've got the divalent iodide here. I'm I am 99% certain all we got is the trivalent iodide, but still, man, that's it. We got it. That is fucking awesome. Is it crystallized? Oh, no. That might just be leftover pieces of the metal. Still, man, we got something. Um, I am rapidly running out of daylight here. What I've done is to kind of just seal it up, and I'm going to let it sit overnight and hope for the best. The septa um, have not been punctured, but I think just a couple times. Of course, as it cools down, it is going to draw in a little bit of air, um, unfortunately. It seems unavoidable, but still, man, we got something off of this. As I've said the whole time, I will be happy if I get essentially anhydrous trivalent iodide off of this. That would be fine, because again, that is no minor accomplishment. Um, clearly, with my setup here, it's not going to be 100% anhydrous. I, I'm beginning to think that this is just impossible for me to achieve, Fair enough, you know, this is some difficult chemistry and I'm trying to do it in my backyard on an absolutely minimal budget. So, we gotta take what we can get. Nevertheless, it does demonstrate that you can make the trivalent salt in THF and it looks like you can do it kinda easily, um, sorta. We'll see what kind of yield we get. Right now, looking down into this thing, it's just black. Um, to me, it just looks like unreacted iodine. Oh, well. It is what it is, people. Damn it. 
Uh, I'm not going to be upset. We did get something out of it. It is good. It is an accomplishment and a step in the right direction. And if I keep reminding myself of that, maybe I won't be too pissed off. Anywho, come back tomorrow when I have a chance to work on this some more. Okay, everybody. So, it's been two days. Um, I ended up having to work so much yesterday that I just could not get to this before I was completely out of daylight and I basically have just let this sit in the desiccator for the last couple of days um I know from past experience that THF will slowly diffuse out through those septa that I have um found out that out the hard way before so I figured that a lot of it would just kind of work its way out there on its own which it has I have replaced the septa with hello zoom out um glass stoppers I, I tried to switch those out as fast as humanly possible um I also made sure to um flush this with argon several times um use the aspirator there to pull the vacuum on it and get as much of the air out as humanly possible wikipedia says that just samarium triiodide is unstable in air it is it will absorb water and form the hexahydrate samarium triiodide hexahydrate isn't unstable in air um Although I have noticed that lanthanide trihalide um, hydrates do tend to discolor over time and break down. So maybe they do need to be stored under inert gas to get better results, especially if you don't plan on using them anytime soon. Anywho, we've got all kinds of this dark orange solid here. I zoom. This is samarium triiodide. Um that has iodine mixed in it. All right, chem peeps. So this is what I was able to achieve um, by setting this thing down in a boiling water bath and pulling a vacuum on it is with the aspirator turned all the way up. Um, you can see, of course, some of the iodine sublimated up. Not nearly as much as you would think would have, though. I don't know if it... I mean, there is some dark material that's up in the stopcock, which is presumably iodine. So, I don't know. Maybe I was... Maybe a lot of it escaped the apparatus. Maybe a lot of it's trapped in this um, solid cake down here. That's also a possibility. I tried to keep this thing... Um, as air free as possible, air and moisture free. Um, you know, I flushed it out with argon again before I pulled the vacuum on it, and after that, I just steeled the stopcock and then put it in the desiccator. So it's slowly pulled air back into itself, but it's dry air. So, um, yeah, it hasn't been really exposed to water at all. You can see we've got what almost looks like some crystals there. It's very hard to tell. Of course, it's all a big jumbled mess, but, you know, you can definitely see the yellow-orange of samarium triiodide. That we did get that is beyond question at this point. Um, I'm also very curious about these little dark spots here because I know there was a little bit of metal left over, and I'm almost wondering, given the conditions of this thing and how it has been largely kept free of air, under at the bottom of that, cake of solid where nothing can get to it i almost wonder if the metal isn't reducing the samarium triiodide to the divalent iodide and it's just very dark colored i don't know um i don't know what the solid divalent iodide would look like stained with iodine so beats the hell out of me i also don't know that iodine could really or it could persist in there like that but anywho it doesn't matter you know with that we got samarium triiodide is beyond doubt there it is right there that yellow orange solid that's it kids so this method does work um obviously it needs some refinements but we were able to prove that you can indeed you know make a lan lanthanide triiodide this way um you know <sighs> And it will turn out pretty decent quality. Purification is a problem. But again, 
I didn't, my goal was not really to get to this point. My goal was just to make the dive valent iodide and we could all look at it and go, woo, and, you know, that would have been a, quite an accomplishment. Um, you know, this is our second place prize here. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the best way to proceed really is. I mean, at this point, there's no getting around having to expose it to the atmosphere. Um... I could either dissolve it in water and recrystallize it as the hexahydrate, which would, you know, prove even more than we've already proven it, that the method does indeed work. Um, that hydrate is just yellow. It's just a yellow compound, much like the other samarium halides. Um, or I could try to break this up and try to keep pieces of it, then eventually in the future, when I get a quartz tube and um, I can actually try this, I can try making samarium diiodide by thermal decomposition. It'll be trapped in the quartz tube. So again, all we'll be able to do is look at it and go, woo, but hey, you know, that is one way I've actually made the diiodide before. It lasted like a second before air got to it and it was destroyed, but I did see it. Weirdly, man, it, like the um, dibromide is more stable than the diiodide and the dichloride is more stable still. Um, at least that's what I've read. So I don't know, guys. I would like to continue playing around with these lanthanides, but I really just need to wrap this up here. Maybe I'll do a little bit of both. We'll save a little bit of this, and one day in the future, at some point, when I have money, so I don't know, that might be the day after never, um, we'll try it with that. I mean, there's still plenty of argon in the cylinder. I've still got plenty of gas, so, you know, we could do that. Because, yeah, it has to be decomposed, um... It, un, under argon and a flow of argon um and it has to be quartz glass because we have to heat it with um the burner so anything else will crack and yeah i'm still reasonably pleased though guys i know i'm kind of trying to comfort myself here a little bit but i mean we did prove that this works the concept is you know definitely works whether it's work a bull is another question. You'd have to have a lot more planning go into it, a much better apparatus. Frankly, it's probably just better to do this inside in a university lab where you have all the shit. <laughs> anyway, I will come back when we're ready to wrap this up. All right, so I was able to get a sample of our material here and keep it in a vial. This has been as flush with argon as I can humanly make it. Um, come on, camera, focus. There you go. It is largely unchanged, so it appears my efforts to preserve it were successful. Um, I then took the rest of this stuff, um, dissolved it in water, and I'm evaporating it down so that we can prove that we do indeed have some samarium triiodide. We would get it as the hexahydrate, which should be a yellow compound. I'm not sure if that's what we're starting to see here or not. Um, I've got it in a, um, over boiling water right now, so I will come back when there is something to report with this. All right, people, there we have it. The one on the left is the samarium triiodide hexahydrate that I was finally able to obtain um, after evaporating everything down. The one on the right is our preserved crude product that has not been exposed to water. So, there we go. I mean, again, it proves that this method does work. Um, it should be a general method. This should work for any lanthanide so far as I can tell, except for cerium where I'm just not sure. But, I mean, you know, so we have found a way to produce anhydrous lanthanide, well, at least bromides and iodides. I'm not really getting chlorine into all this mix would be a grade A pain in the ass, but for bromine and iodine, I think that this would work. Um, 
If anybody has anything they would like to add to that, any kind of, you know, if you know more about this than I do, put it in the comments and I'll make sure everybody hears about it. But there we go, people. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, even though nobody but you will ever be able to see it. I'll understand if you didn't like it. You know, it's not, you know, a, just a straightforward prep like I usually do, but... This was a bit more of an experimental method. And I mean, it again, with a little bit of refinement, I really think there's something here. So it has potential. Anyway, until the next one, you guys, which not sure when that's going to be coming. I will see you later.